Hi there, my name is Chantal. I hope you're doing well today. Unless you've been living under a rock, you will have heard of these zebra mild liners. I got the natural set from Stationery Pal and I do actually have a code here if you're interested. I want to see what all the fuss is about. I know the bullet journal girlies are loving them but I want to try and create an actual drawing using just these and see if that's possible. This is how the colour chart is looking. I know to most people this would probably be completely pointless. I mean, they are kind of just highlighters. But I want to try and create a drawing from this. And in order to do that, I need to know what kind of mixes I can make or if it's worth mixing at all. The main thing that this colour chart is showing is that most colours make brown. It looks like if we're going to add green and brown, they really need to be the last shade because if we put them down first, we don't really get any kind of variety from it. The grey isn't too bad at glazing, so again, that will probably be a last shade. I think we're going to start with peach and pink because pretty much any colour can go over them and tint them, but it just doesn't work the other way around. So definitely peach for the kind of base layer and then probably a little bit of pink, a little bit of grey for shadow and then only green and brown if we like really need it. I stared at this colour chart for ages to try and figure out what the colour palette could be, what we could create with it and honestly I mean I think you could just about do a landscape with all of these browns and greens if you had a blue but because we don't have a blue I'm thinking we try and do a face. It's probably going to be really difficult but looking at these colours there are almost skin tones here. It's mostly a brown palette with a bit of pink so I think we could attempt to do a face. This is the face that I've come up with. It's based off a gal that I saw on Pinterest. I'm thinking we can do kind of grey for the hair. Obviously the browns and the pinks for the skin tone. And then I'm thinking we do the green by doing it like a little bit of like a background but leaving gaps on it. Possibly the earrings could be like... Uh, maybe like these two to try and create something like a gold and the grey we can obviously use a little bit for the eyes, a little bit for shadows, maybe under the neck. I think this will be the best way to be able to use all the colours, to do green for background, grey for hair and then the rest for like skin tones. Yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> I want to start with something like really subtle, maybe like an ear, <laughs> just to sort of um, warm up a little bit. So we've got a, the ones that are like highlighters, and then we've got a quite a big bullet nib. I do personally prefer brush markers, but I will try chisel, that's what it is. I will try a chisel tip. My problem with chisel tip is I find them quite difficult to control. Yeah, you can definitely see the pencil marks. I generally only really use watercolour, so this is a little bit wild. I should really be looking at the reference photo. I have this bad habit of just kind of winging it. I'll go for grey for the hair. I really don't know how I'm going to approach the hair, but... One thing I did notice is that it can't really do many layers, so I'm going to have to pick my layers really well. Do you feel like this is missing a blue if I'm honest? I know like there's lots of different sets and you can get brighter colours. This set that I chose are very naturals, but I do feel like it's missing a blue. You see what I mean about it? it starts to sort of peel the paper up so you really can't do more than one layer. 
It means I kind of need to create this portrait literally with just one layer. So I kind of want to block in the grey, but I feel like that's a little bit scary. I want the lines to show though, I think I do want the lines to show because they are highlighters really. Oh no, I, I just remembered I forgot to do that thing where you're supposed to go on um, like the left side if you're right handed. I suppose I could do the background next, leave some gaps. Maybe about here would be where the light hits. And then again, we've got like a little bit darker around the ear. I guess it's gonna have like a really highlight a sort of messy style to it because it's not gonna blend. Now, I think we'll go for the background. I feel like going in with the green background right now is just prolonging the inevitable, which is I'm gonna ruin it when I do the face. Oh, this is a bit scary too, but the background is gonna be patchy. It's supposed to be patchy. So this is definitely like a really difficult challenge for me because it's something that doesn't even have the opportunity to blend. Just because of the way that I hold it, I think I'm not like used to it. I'm not like pushing it down the entire way evenly. It's definitely a look. It is a look. I'm not sure how I feel about the look. I'm gonna attempt to do a second layer over the grey and see if it works now that it's true. I think the answer is no, it kind of works, but I don't really like the texture. It's gonna rip at some point, so that's, that's what I mean by texture. I mean like, it goes all bumpy and it could rip. Now we should do the bit that I've been prolonging, the face, the actual <laughs> main bit. Okay, so we've got a peach and a brown for the skin tone. We've got a bit of pink for blush. I know that there's kind of blue in the whites of the eyes, but I'm a little bit scared to use the grey because it's so much darker. Like, it doesn't really go light. So maybe I'll try and add a little bit of peach instead. And then if we do something like that, maybe... Can I kind of leave gaps and sort of, I don't know, try and get the illusion of skin without actually filling it in? Okay, I'm gonna try and do around the face, but the problem is like, if it does, if I have to do two layers, I feel like it's just so obvious. I feel like that wasn't a good play, but I feel like the cheeks do need something. I don't know if it should be like dots or like little lines. Yeah, they might be a little bit too close together, but okay. Now, obviously this isn't gonna blend. We just need to make it look more like it has a purpose. The green and the brown are actually looking really quite similar. Maybe a little bit of brown as well. Mm, possibly there, maybe. But like also whether it's gonna look any good if I do cover it. And whilst it's still wet, I might do a little bit of peach because I feel like there's, you can, well, no, you can't blend it, but I feel like if you add it when it's still wet, it does do a little bit of something. But I was gonna sort of add a bit of grey here because obviously it's shadow. Plus a little bit of brown, let's just add like every colour really. Here's the colour chart. I think the closest to gold might actually be brown and peach. Maybe we'll leave a bit of white in the centre as well. And then I'm gonna try and add a little bit of peach and see if it will blend at all. Yeah, 
Yeah, once you get a certain amount on the paper, it does kind of move, like you can sort of move it, which, I mean, <laughs> don't know if that's a good thing, but I feel like it actually is more likely to blend once you've got a certain amount down. I don't think that's better, but we've done it on one, so we're gonna have to do it on the other. I like that. I think that brown has actually really added quite a lot. Ooh, we could add freckles to disguise the mess. Freckles are like an art hack. Every time I do a portrait, it's kind of like, mm, what would finish this off? And it's always freckles. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if it makes it better or it just tries to disguise what you've done. Okay, that's this piece done. I used five zebra mild liners for this piece and that's all I used. I used a brown, peach, pink, grey and green so it's very much like a natural set and they have no blending capabilities at all. They were quite pleasant to work with. I'm not a fan of a chisel tip and I think it helped with the hairline using a chisel tip. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. This is surprising considering I just used highlighters. That's that experiment completed. It went better than I thought it would so for that I am happy. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you did and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!